So this is your tap tempo. Your tap tempo is essentially how I can sit there and tap this, and you'll notice, depending on how many taps I'm hitting, it's changing the tempo, which is this box just to the right. You can assign this to a key command on your Q wordy keyboard, your, key, your computer keyboard, and you can also assign it to any MIDI controller. A note, a pad, a knob, a switch, whatever, whatever your heart's desire, you can assign to that. Same thing with uh, the actual tempo itself. You could assign that to a knob and be able to, to speed it up or slow it down over time. That's fantastic. Just to the right of that, you'll see tempo nudge up or down. You can sort of fudge the tempo a little bit. So let's say you have a record. Let's say you're working with a DJ or you're DJing yourself and you're playing vinyl or a CD player and you want to drop uh, the next track you're dropping into the, into the mix is from Ableton. Well, Ableton isn't following the sync of a CD player or even a vinyl. That would be pretty interesting. I'm sure there are devices out there that can do it that would generate a MIDI clock. But let's say you don't. So you have to, you've got this record playing and you want Ableton, so you're queuing it up. You know the tempos are right, but they're just not starting exactly in the same time. So just like on a record player, you kind of have to push the record a little bit to ha help it catch up. So it will match the beat. So you can actually do some beat matching. So this is essentially what that is. Uh, you can hit this and it will slow or, or speed up the tempo as it's playing, and that way you can mix things in. Uh, it actually works pretty well. I've, uh, I've done sets with uh, tag teaming with different DJs, and they're running like a CD player or vinyl, and I'm running Ableton, and I'm able to lock up to whatever they're playing and drop in without, uh, without too much mess. To the right of that, you'll notice this is our time signature. By default, we're in 4-4 time. Feel free to switch to whatever your heart desires. And to the right of that, last but not least, this is what we call our metronome. As you can hear, it's just a little click. Metronome is really important. Whenever you're working with audio files and with MIDI files, it's really important to always play to some sort of timing reference. So what's great about Ableton is I can just grab a drum loop, drop it in, and it will conform automatically to whatever my session tempo is. But what's, you always have to play to something. If I, don't, if I just hit record and I don't have any timing reference, in my head I may be playing at 120 beats per, per minute, but my session would be set up at 105. Therefore, editing turns into a nightmare. So it's always important to at least play with some sort of timing reference whether that's the actual metronome or a drum loop. This also is really useful when we're warping tracks. We'll talk a little bit about this as, you know, I'll drag a, a song in and we'll want to warp it and make sure that it's in time with our metronome. That way, if all of my tracks have been warped properly, and I usually use a metronome, but if they're all warped, that means I can just drop in. I don't really have to worry about beat matching, which is one of the the greatest things about this program, especially when you're DJing with it. To the right of that, you will see our follow song option. This uh, really comes into play with our arrangement view. So let's say I zoom in. Now you'll notice up here, I'll, I'll do this real quick. I can grab this and I can zoom in. If I hit play, you'll see the playhead. Right now we're not seeing it, but the playhead should be, there's the playhead. Notice how the playhead is moving across the screen. It has now left the screen. If I have follow on, you'll notice that this automatically chases my playhead as we move through time. So up at the top, you'll notice our bars, beats, and ticks. These are our smallest divisions, being the tick. So that's a bar, that's a beat, and that's a tick. And that has to do with these numbers that are up here on the top. You'll see one, two, three, four. Those are our, our bars. So all music can be broken up into smaller sections if we want to think about it like that. We work mostly in, in uh, a lot of music is, is written in, in loop-based music, especially in electronic music. So we'll set up a one bar, two bar, four bar loop, kind of like what we have here. This is our looping section, which is handy.